All right, let's start. Um, just uh, by introducing uh, my German teacher, uh, <laughs> which is uh, Otto Ingenz. Uh, we know each other from uh, back a few years ago. We've been over there uh, at this place. This is uh, where we met in real life for the first time. Um, I, I don't know if does does anybody knows where that might be. I mean, besides the people that were with me at the same time, because they probably know. Anybody has an idea where that is? Shout it. That is actually Yosemite, as you can see here. And that guy is called Half Dome. And this is by far, at least for me, the, the most beautiful land landscape I've ever seen in my life. Uh, of course, I haven't been in, 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 in Munich yet, so. Uh, <laughs> All right, so the way it would usually go between Altwin and me is it would put up a, a word like that, for example. Like, I don't know if anybody can read that, but that's actually Streichholzsechtelchen. And I would go like, uh, what? And then he would go like, oh, you don't know this word? Like, I would go, no, I live with a German uh, wife for many years, but it would bring me new words. And so Altwin is known for this amazing app called Where2, which, by the way, we should thank him because the... Um, the the place we were at yesterday, the pre-conference dinner, I found it via where to. Um, if you don't know, guys, in the Objective Cologne app, there is a way, a secret way to get a promo code to get where to. And uh, the place that we will be tomorrow, I found it also with where to. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, Altwin Gens. Um. Yeah, welcome to the first um, technical talk, a little bit at least. Um, technical as well as um, as design related because I'm talking about UI appearance. Um, as probably most of you know, um, Apple introduced a lot of new, new APIs in iOS 5 uh, that are related to um, appearance APIs. This allows you to customize um, all kinds of uh, look related stuff for iOS apps. And um, for example, this is one example of what Find My Friends app, probably most of you know, um, has a very um, special customized look. Um, so we, we're talking about how to achieve those looks or what's what the, the API and the technical, like, technicalities behind customizing. Uh, and your look actually looks like that. Or path is one example, the custom navigation bar. Um, this is Camera Plus, also has a custom uh, navigation bar in this case with a custom font for the titles and for the buttons also. Um, there's another, another example, Tweetbot. They are probably uh, using not really using system APIs, but doing all, all of this by themselves. But just to illustrate, I think it would be possible now with the tool we have at hand to, to achieve such a look. And of course, our own app that also heavily relies on that, um, on that new APIs. But actually, we had that um, achieved already for. for iOS versions up from uh, up until uh, 3.0 and more. So, so we went through, uh, through it uh, the hard way, I would say. But um, since iOS 5, it's, it's way easier now to, to customize it. And we have a, a really big um, toolbox um, at our disposal that we can use to, to customize the appearance and. Um, I want to go through them, but through the basic ideas uh, pretty quickly. Um, the, the most or the easiest way to customize um, um, the appearance is by just using the tint color and just tinting your navigation bars, your buttons, your controls, basically, whatever um, corporate CI color you might have for, for the brand. So, so that's uh, really, really easy to do. You just basically choose whatever color and, and assign it uh, to the elements you might have. And basically, all the 
important uh, UI kit classes uh, support tinting. So, of course, all the bars, navigation toolbars, um, and, and also all the, the, the controls, sliders, which is so. So that's pretty easy to do. You might notice there's one uh, one control that isn't tinted, which is the UI segmented control. In the default style, um, I don't know why that's uh, the case. Probably nobody uses it anymore. Most of, most people probably go for for the bar style, which is a little bit um, smaller in height. So um, that's probably the reason. Um, if you want to do more, of course, tint color is not really the way to go. Then you have to uh, use custom backgrounds. But uh, first of all, what uh, iOS version is supported is um, basically the status of iOS 5. So most of that uh, was added in iOS 5, and some of the, the um, controls were missing in iOS 5. They introduced a stepper in iOS 5 that wasn't yet appearance customizable, and uh, now we get it with uh, the new iOS 6. Um, and as I said, background images, of course, are much more flexible and give you much more control about uh, customizing uh, the UI. In this case, uh, don't. Uh, yeah, I, I just took basically the same uh, background image for, for all controls uh, to make it easy. Of course, in a, in a, in a real application, we want to use um, nicely painted background images. And of course, you would like to um, use images with uh, with edge insets, um, so they allow you to uh, stretch or tile the image depending on the, on the size needed. So, for example, in the navigation bars, or scroll bars, or, or controls like that, they can be rolled in size and uh, can use the same image basically. Um, Another customization options are text styles. Um, they allow you to basically uh, set the, the font, the color, and the shadow color for, for most, um, or for, for a lot of controls, like especially for, for the navigation bars and the fonts and everything. That's quite handy to um, customize basically the font that you want to use. Um, much more, I mean, the, the font is nice, but it only allows you uh, basically to set the, the same font, same color for the whole text of uh, the control. If you want to have more control on that, basically just attribute certain ranges of the string um, uh, for, for your uh, theory's purposes, you uh, have to resolve any attributed strings, maybe uh, introduce an iOS 5 as well. Um, the problem there is um, they aren't really, really supported that well in iOS 5. So um, there are these attributed strings, but not a lot of support to handle and to work. With them. So currently, or in iOS 5, um, you would have to resort to the core text layer to, to actually display them. Um, or you can uh, use some third party libraries, uh, STT Core Text, uh, that. Uh, Allows to display um, attributed strings in iOS 5, as well as also working with uh, those strings, basically converting to and from HTML, which allows you to much easier basically create those kind of attributed strings. Um, alternatives, if you want to uh, to display rich text in iOS 5, of course, obviously there's uh, the web view. And uh, it's interesting, you can do a lot of stuff with the web view. Normally, you would think of, okay, that's the browser, this is all the capabilities of the browser, but uh, as soon as you disable the scrolling for, for the web view, as soon as you make it transparent, for example, you can do a lot of stuff. And basically, just a label uh, with rich text is possible with the web view. Might seem a bit of overkill, but in a lot of cases, it's just uh, the easiest way to do it. There's another um, nice little trick that I sometimes prefer over web views, um, which is basically uh, it's a it's a kind of a hidden API. Um, you can um, supply a text view with HTML. 
Um, as I said, it's, it's not an official property or so you could set, but with that set value for key, uh, you can actually use HTML in a plain UI text view. And this has some advantages over, um, over web views. Um, first of all, it's easier to, um, to get rid of all the Chrome of a web view. Um, and, um, and secondly, um, it allows you to, to use uh, size to fit or size back fits. So if you do the layout calculations, like finding out how large the label is, so then it's much easier with the, with the text view. Whereas with the web view, you would always basically load an HTML into the web view, and then you get basically a callback that uh, it's loaded now, and then you can, do, uh, can continue with your layout calculations, which is always harder because it's asynchronous. So for that, the UI text view hack sometimes is a, is a, is a nice little um, alternative that makes life easier. And for some of you might wonder whether this um, might create any problems with the Revit process. Uh, we have this in, in Veritu for, for ages and it has never been a problem so far. And that's also what I'm hearing from, from a lot of developers. So I guess it's, it's a safe thing to use. Um, in iOS 6, Apple went further and, and introduced support really like display support attribute stream, so basically all the UI view uh, components, UI components that display strings are now able to, to display attribute strings uh, alternatively. So UI related text view, text field, uh, they all support uh, attribute strings now. And you can also use the um, uh, in a string category methods like draw and rec or cycle font, etc. To draw directly or to do uh, layout calculations. Um, kind of strangely, there's one thing missing uh, the search bar. Uh, with the placeholder and the default text surprisingly doesn't support rich text. So in this case, you end up with the, just the, the standard Atlantica Maya font and cannot modify that. By the radar for that. By the way, I have uh, some radars uh, on, on, uh, on my slides. All of them are also on open radar if you want to uh, look at them on my file tunes or so. Um, speaking of UI search bar, there was another um, little annoyance uh, we no I noticed. Um, sometimes you want to um, get rid of the, the Chrome besides sides of the navigation bar. Um, it's surprisingly hard to do that. Um, I would imagine it would be just easy to, to supply a transparent PNG as a background image. Um, surprisingly, it really doesn't work. It gives you another round of rectangle around the actual search field. Um, so what you have to do in this case is basically subclass uh, your search bar. And, and override the layout subuse method to, to get rid of uh, those um, additional views. Basically, that's at least what works for us. Um, speaking of bars, um, don't know where we uh, go tonight, but um, we are not yet not yet there. So first of all, we're speaking speaking about navigation bars. Um, First, what elements uh, are uh, basically a, a navigation bar consists of? Um, there is um, obviously the, the custom title view, so you are able to, to supply your own view for the title. It could be an image view, in this case, uh, it's a, basically a container that uh, has two UI labels attached to it or embedded. Um, that's already pretty old stuff that's around for, for ages, so not really new in iOS 5. Um, there is uh, the possibility of multiple buttons. Um, that actually was also possible um, before iOS 5, um, basically by assigning a custom view to a button that consisted of two different buttons, basically. 
In iOS 5, it's much easier. Basically, you can supply just an array of items um, that you assign to or whatever for the left side or the right side of the, um, of the view. Um, what is new in iOS 5 um, is the possibility to uh, put a button basically next to the back button. That wasn't possible before, at least not easily to do. So, so that's um, a nice addition in iOS 5. Um, when we talk about the navigation bar, um, of course, a lot of, in a lot of cases you, you have situations where you push and pop navigation views um, uh, basically via navigation controller. Um, and for that, I mean, uh, we, we have this nice little push and pop animation, which I uh, shortly want to display in slow motion. Um, it's kind of interesting, that, uh, by the way, I am. Who knows, uh, who doesn't know the, the trick uh, to slow down animations in the simulator? Um, by hitting three times the shift key, you can basically slow down every uh, animation, which is uh, very neat if you uh, want to debug uh, any animated, uh, animated uh, views you, you might have. So that works for system views, basically for everything. So. Um, but what I wanted to, 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 to show here is, um, let me just repeat that uh, once again, um, watch closely the background. The background actually doesn't change. So the background image completely stays uh, static, even though the, the push effect um, might suggest that it would move uh, as well. And this has some consequences actually. Um, uh, it's, it's not possible basically to to change the background image upon the push and pop. So you always have the same background image um, uh, for, for each navigation bar. Um, and if you want to do that, if you still don't uh, want to do that, it's, it's kind, of, kind of hard to do that. We, we did that uh, in, in where to from when you have the real page and you can select any any category, and basically there's a shift animation with the navigation bars uh, changing. And this is really hard because you have to um, basically fiddle around with, uh, with the sub views and to make sure that you have a nice uh, transition there. So I cannot really recommend that. And in most cases, if you want to change the background, you should, uh, you should go the route of Having a mobile view controller that uh, comes up. Um, that's in most cases uh, the better way to do it. Um, table views, of course, is another very um, important building blocks of iOS applications. Um, and we wanted to have a um, custom look here as well. So, this is basically our um, generic table view. With a, within the navigation view looks like and what we wanted to achieve was a look like this. So um, basically what we want to have is, um, is a custom background, this is a brownish uh, striped background, we wanted to have uh, different label colors for the group, uh, group style table view and um, I uh, will walk you through the process how to do that. That's still not possible with the iOS 5 appearance or even iOS 6 appearance APIs. So this is an example where we need to uh, go a little step further basically. And, and um, I think the techniques uh, are kind of interesting and can be adopted in many ways for, for similar situations where you basically want to hack um, the appearance uh, in a way that's not yet possible with the, the official APIs. So how to do that? First of all, um, the, the Stripe group uh, table uh, view background, um, that's interestingly uh, just a color. So it's uh, a background color assigned to a view and um, for colors it's possible to basically use images that are patterned. Um, so, so you can define color that's actually <coughs> and that's uh, basically um, what we do here is we override that standard group table view color uh, um, property, removing property of UI color by basically providing our own image here. 
But that's not enough because Apple basically uses uh, their own whatever view behind the scenes, and, and this is is not really basically taken. Uh, if you just override that, it will have no effect actually. So we have to go a little bit uh, further and, and to, to hack that. So what what can we do basically? We, essentially, what we have to do is uh, we have to patch layout something to the table view. So basically, as soon as the table view renders, we have to or we want to do something else and we want to customize that. Um, so of course we can do a category. Probably you're familiar with uh, objectives categories. Define a category on any on any existing class and extend uh, the behavior of that class. So that's pretty easy to do. So we can define our own layout subuse method. The hard thing here is uh, how do we call the original implementation? Because of course we don't want to reinvent the wheel and do uh, our well, own layout subuse implementation and we could, uh, yeah invent whole table view by ourselves, which doesn't make any sense. So so how do we do that? Um, well, one could think, okay, it just call super, but this problem, this doesn't work. So, um, super would basically just call layout subview of UI view, which does nothing. So, um, nothing that we, that we need here. So, how, do we, how, how can we do that? Well, uh, there's um, a technique called methods using that allows you to um, basically exchange the method implementation of any given method um, with another implementation. Objective-C is a dynamic language, so it does everything that's in the method uh, resolution at runtime. So uh, this is nice because it allows us to, um, yeah, to change the method implementation at runtime. And that's exactly what we need to do here. So, so what we want to have is basically we want to have a my, my layout subuse method basically, or we define that my, my layout subuse method, and while methods within we actually absolutely exchange for implementations. So basically, if I call layout subuse, in reality my layout subuse will be called. If I call my layout subuse, in reality layout subuse will be called, um, and that allows us basically that we can say, okay, let's do um, the system implementation first. So first of all, we want to see, okay, like that we can uh, call the system implementation, but that's wrong, of course, um, because layout subuse is exchanged by my layout subuse. So it looks a little bit strange, but actually we have to call my layout subuse because that is, is exchanged by the, by the original implementation. So why was subclassing not enough in this case? Um, because well, in, in a lot of cases, um, uh, you have standard system views, like for uh, standard view controllers, like for, for example, for mail, for address group. Address group UI is a classic example of a, a table view, basically, that, is, that comes as a, as a as a stock view controller from Apple. And of course, there is no way to say uh, that any whatever address figure was in control or how uh, they call it, call it that we call it exactly, but then you cannot just say it yeah, the other sometimes. Well, of course, you're right, if, you, if, you're, if your app just consists of head views of your own, then that would be probably an easier solution. But this even works for standard system view controls. And Apple likes it that way. <laughs> because they yeah, recently have been very strict about fiddling with their views. I mean, there is, there is no final API. Mean. Yeah. So this is technically, I think it's, it's okay. okay. Um, of course, it's kind of risky and uh, uh, I sound a little bit about this later on. So, um, but I just want to present a method where we can go a little bit a step further because otherwise we can end up with no way to do it and if we still want to do it, um, this is the way to do it. So, um, just a, a short look at how, how that smoothing actually uh, works. Um, there's an implementation, there are several implementations on the internet floating around. I like this one quite a lot because it's, it's very short, very easy. 
basically what uh, what this code does it checks for whether the uh, the method to replace is defined in, uh, in the actual class or in the super class. So if it's defined in the super class, it has to be uh, replaced via the class class replace method. And in the other case, it's the method exchange implementations call uh, that uh, will be used. All of those um, functions are basically defined in the object of C runtime. So. So how, how does the, the table view uh, modifying code look like? Well, first of all, we, we call the super implementation or the, the default implementation. So we call the self my layout subviews, which is basically replaced by the system layout subviews. Uh, and then after that, basically we check if it's a group style, and if yes, um, we uh, define our background colors um, and we uh, should the table view have a head of the and for that we also assign the same striped background color. So this is kind of easy, it's not a lot of code. And um, I think also in this case it's quite stable. It's, it's very unlikely that this code would break in a future version. And I think in fact it's it's uh, around since I was three hour code and completely unmodified as well. So that's and stable ideas. But of course, uh, I should mention uh, that methods whistling and, and, and basically filling around with the sub hierarchy of uh, system UI kit classes or UI views, of course, has always some risk uh, actually that you cannot get around with or you have to basically accept that. So it always could break on you at the next iOS release. So, so always keep that in mind. Um, it is a risk. Um, I think it's, um, in my opinion, it's, uh, it's okay to deal with that risk. But uh, of course, everyone has to, to um, think about that as well. So. Um, a little summary of uh, what we have. Um, in terms of um, the, the different uh, APIs, uh, this is basically the status pre iOS 5 uh, in terms of UI customization options. It's, uh, it's not a lot, basically, what we uh, uh, had at our disposal. Um, in iOS 5, that basically was a lot of new stuff coming that allowed us to um, yeah, modify most of the stuff uh, that we wanted to do. Um, still, there were some, some missing gaps, and, and actually still are. Uh, some of those gaps were closed in iOS 6. So, for example, section index is a table view, it's highly customizable <laughs> color. Um, they, they did some nice improvements, um, for, for especially for, for the switches. They have a lot of options, uh, you can everything separately. Um, in the bar buttons, um, you have a lot more options, like for example, customizing only, um, uh, customizing specifically, for example, the done button, which is always a little different in style, like this, I think, or this dark blue style. That wasn't possible in iOS 5, so they, they definitely, um, yeah, sat down and, um, and um, yeah, addressed a lot of the deficiencies in iOS 5. Um, talking about um, basically when you when you want to add when you want to customize the appearance of your app, of course there are many many controls. It would be not a very uh, easy uh, solution to customize each control separately. So what I've invented for that is basically called uh, it's called appearance proxy. And that looks like this, basically. You, you um, uh, get an appearance proxy for each new class. Like, let's say for, for you want to customize all your sliders in the app, and you basically get the proxy for, for the slider and say, OK, uh, I want to customize the, the minimum track to color or any other um, action with any other property for the customization. <coughs> Um, so this is, in most cases, this is just fine. You would uh, say, okay, I want to customize all my bars the same way, all my controls the same way. 
In some cases, you might have uh, a situation where you might where you want to customize different uh, or the same control differently depending on on which view it resides, whether it's on whatever that part of the app, the different tabs of the app, you might have different other screens and stuff like that. So for those situations, there's um, a way uh, called appearance when contained in. And then you basically supply a system with um, a list of UID controllers or UID use, an indeterminated list, and that allows you to constrain basically the, um, the appearance customization to just a few just a few situations, a few views, a few controllers. Um, unfortunately, this is sometimes a little bit um, confusing. Um, this container hierarchy, for example, when you have a navigation controller with a lot of whatever uh, different navigation levels, basically, let's say we have three different levels that we can push and pop to, um, all of them are basically, uh, from, from the perspective of that containment API, are contained within the same navigation controller. Of course, um, uh, if you have the content view, basically, you have three different view controllers, they are contained in those three different view controllers. But let's say you want to customize the bar button, for example. The bar button isn't part of the content view controller. The bar button is only part of the navigation bar, and that is part of the navigation controller. So let's say you want to customize the bar button uh, for, for the different levels of the navigation hierarchy that kind of, there are some, some limits there. Right? It's not need to do that. Um, but in most cases, I would say it's, uh, it's working just fine. Actually, in my, in, my, in my experience, in most cases, you would end up just using the, the general appearance proxy because you normally just want to modify all, all sliders, or all switch, switches, or whatever you might have. <coughs> that brings me, um, oh, OK, this is. Um, basically, in this case, uh, we have a MyView controller uh, in the appearance when I'm contained list. That brings me to um, my wish list. Um, I, I wrote that down actually uh, since uh, or soon after iOS 5 was released. Um, and that basically were the deficiencies of iOS 5. So what I uh, what I'm still missing for like for, for navigation bars, for example, they currently have no way to specify different background images if the navigation bar is higher, uh, accommodate the prompt, or if there is an op opaque or transparent navigation bar, so there's no way to specify custom images for that. Not use the resizable image. If uh, a resizable image, of course, works uh, for that. And it's fine if you want to do more, then it's not easy to do. In most cases, you're right, uh, you can get away with it with just using the size of the images, and that it works pretty good. But um, if for whatever reason, the size of the images don't uh, fit your needs, then, then there's basically something missing. Um, as I said, uh, this container concept sometimes is a little bit. Uh, hard to work with or very, yeah, very uh, complicated set of situations that it would be mildly easier to have a kind of selector concept or so, like, like CSS selectors where you can say, okay, I want to have, I want to specify um, like a predicate um, when this appearance modification should happen or not. Um, but uh, we have to live with that. Um, for the table view section index, I mentioned that. That's uh, addressed in IS 6, um, so that we can strike from our list. Um, the group style, uh, I mentioned how to, how to work around that uh, methods with link approach I described. Um, scroll view is, is still something missing, like the, the scroll bar, how to customize that. Um, Popover actually is addressed in iOS 6, so that's nice to um, customize the popovers for iPad applications. Still missing is uh, all the callouts, map views, action sheets, alert, so 
So that, that's still a lot of stuff actually missing, um, and if we can just hope that in iOS 7 or whatever release, they also address those items. So let me recap um, shortly what we, uh, what we talked about. Um, a lot of um, appearance customization options um, basically were introduced in iOS 5. Um, rich text was basically not really ready for print in iOS 5 and made it uh, to the front and center station in iOS 6 only. So it was possible in iOS 5, but only in uh, some third party library actually. Um, or if you went, went down to the core text layer, which I guess most of you don't want to do normally. Um, there are still various pieces missing, um, as I uh, described in my wish list. And um, methods missing, of course, is always an option if you want to, to do more in a specific way. Thanks, everybody. Any questions on? Yeah, we we'll have time for one question. And I would like to advise speakers to repeat the question, which is a good idea. Uh, for that report, who wants to ask the question? Yes. Over there? All right. Just wait for the mic. So, nobody else wants to ask the question? I don't think I should. Okay. So, uh, we'll take the backgrounds uh, for the whole uh, appearance of the app. Uh, why would the post ads feature be a good solution for that? Why not the post ads? Object C post ads. When you um, replace the class with the super class. That was a question. I'm, I'm not familiar with that approach. I don't know how it would work in a similar way, but actually, that method folding approach, in my view, is, uh, is, is very easy to do. And, First, um, first the guy. Yeah, you should probably look at that because the book will be nicer and what's the process of that? Who's that? That's not really a good idea if you want to go with that. So, I don't know that. I had a project that was removed because of the process class power, which on the other hand was a little bit more appropriate to be removed. Sorry. So it was a problem to be removed for the post class call, but you could get away with this if you just do your eyes quickly. But I think method is brilliant. Um, this is probably the better choice for the only place in the which is more targeted. Yeah, but if you also have just one method, it's the same thing. There is no false class on my loss. That's not what that is. No. I'm going to suggest you guys to keep on this system this time. Maybe that is things that I don't know. Yeah, it's only in the same way. It's not only in the same way. It's coming out at the right time. No, no, no. I'm not talking about the old process implementation. I'm talking about the new process implementation for the new one. This is where I realize you guys are way smarter than I am. That's why I'm going to be looking. <laughs> All right, so yeah, um, it would, yeah. would probably be interesting to look at that, but um, as I said, I think since, since it works so well, uh, there's for me not really a reason to, to, to do it any different. Uh, All right, thank you all, guys. And we Thank <laughs> you.